Hi everybody, it's Nigel here from Nigel's Modelling Bench and uh, welcome back to the channel. Sorry I've been away for a little while but um, life gets in the way and other things get in the way such as real ones of these. Um, but the weather's pretty freezing this morning so I've decided to get back to the bench and put together a review for you. Now as you all know I've been doing some work on the book which is a beautiful main kit of a missile launch system and I need to get back on that um, and get that one done. I've also been doing some work on this. This is actually a double build where I'm taking a Defender 110 hardtop and converting it into a 90. Um, but I'm also building the Wimmick kit as well. If we look in the box, we can see here I've been doing a little bit of work off camera and we've got um, there's the two engines there painted all up with their transmissions. We've got the black short wheelbase chassis and then here we've got the uh, the sand coloured long wheelbase chassis. And I've been doing a bit of work as you can see I've altered the front bumper mounts because they, um, they're not correct. You've got two bolts on top of the bumper when well, it's actually it should be two uh, brackets. But we'll cover that in the um, in the actual build video. So you guys have been since like I don't know November you've been watching me build English Land Rovers and a Russian launch system so just to keep your uh, interest going I thought I'd do a review on a American subject or a couple of American subjects actually and this is one of them. Now I'm going to show you now two kits I've had in my stash for a long long while. This is one of the favourite kits I own, one of my favourite kits I own. Um, it seems that most American military stuff is Oshkosh, as you can see here this is an Oshkosh truck and it's a Mark 23 MTVR cargo truck. Now I know companies like to do this and they put on the box, actual model may vary from image on box. This one is sort of taking the mick a bit because you don't get the gun and you don't get the canvas so you're getting a sort of gunless canvasless truck so sort of you're getting that. Okay, so I don't quite know how they got away with that, but never mind. Um, so we, th th this kit is um, one I'm going to review next. This review now is going to be on this one. Now, this is a big old beast. It's the Hempt M983. It's another Oshkosh truck. And um, this is the tractor variant. And this is the trumpeter kit. Now, this model has been available in various different guises as tankers and... Um, weapons carriers and stuff from both Italeri and um, Dragon or and Revell as well and in fact if you go and buy the the Dragon kit of the Patriot Mitchell launch system you get actually the um, the Dragon um, Patriot launch system and everything and you get the old Italeri truck kit now if you go and buy the AFV club um, it's all trumpeter rebox so this is what you get in the AFV club boxing so um yeah, don't be fooled. Um, if you want to build one of these with the Patriot system and everything, I suggest what you do is get this with some aftermarket, which we'll go into. And I suggest you get this and get the Trumpeter launch system as well, because from what I've read and what I've seen, um, they're a lot better. I have actually built the Patriot system. Um, I got halfway through it and actually dropped it and it smashed to pieces on the floor. And in a rage, I just shoved it all in the box and threw it in the bin. I kept some of the photo etch parts out of it. I may build another one one day, I don't know. But um, yeah, it was. Um, it's one of those kits, the Patriot launch system is one of those kits where it's just endless sitting down, gluing pieces together. It has no real, for me, it has no real interest. It's just aimless adding pieces together. It's like building a galleon and adding the cannons, you know, it's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of parts doing the same thing. It's it's very, uh, I don't know, it's not really, it's one of those kits I think you have to build alongside others. But anyway, this here, this tractor is one of my favourite trucks in the whole wide world. Um, this kit is kit number uh, 01021. It's been around for a while, it's about £40-50 pounds, depending where you look. It's got a length of 256mm, a width of 72 and it's 380 plus parts. Now to build an accurate model you're going to need some aftermarket and as I say we'll go into that um, because unlike some kits, I'm not being a rivet counter here, there is stuff from this that is missing, physically missing, not there, that needs to be there. So um, we'll look at that anyway. So looking around the box, uh, we've got some history there, you can uh, pause that and read if you want to. 
it's showing us we've got a sheet of photo etch a very sort of simple decal sheet and we've got it's a 2015 I bought this when it first came out so I've had it for five years now I guess it or four and a half anyway so there's two options in the box by the look of it we've got the Euro camo scheme if that's what you call it I can't remember now and then we've got the, uh, the basic sand colored um, the way I like to see these is when they've got the Euro scheme on them and then they add the armor to them and it's sand colored I like to see them split up so um Without further ado, let's have a look inside the box. I'm sorry if it's a little bit dim for you, it's because I've got the light moved away to get rid of the glare. When we start looking at parts, we'll get the light changed. So in the box, um, we've got typical brilliant trumpeter packaging, and we've got the, uh, the separate sprues over here and the cab and everything all kept separate. We've got our tyres, decal sheet there, um, wondering where the PE is, to be honest. So we've got here, we've got our instructions. And then we've got our colour callouts. Then we've got the uh, very big sheet here of what's coming our way. Um, that there, if you haven't already bought it, don't buy it. Get the main one. Um, you can see it in there. The actual missile launcher part is overscale. It's too tall. Um, it's not correct at all. And also some of the steering gear is missing. The main kit is, uh, is better. Um, over here we've got the 16th scale MRAP. And there's the uh, Patriot system I was just talking about. So there's that one. We've got our colour callouts. So as you can see, we've got the, the sand version and the camouflage version. And we've got the usual tools advertising there. And so um, yeah, we've got some the clear parts there, beautifully packaged. Typical trumpeter style with the foam. And I'm guessing that on the bottom of the box here we have got our yeah, we've got a fairly large sheet of photo etch with some nicely uh, nicely etched grills there which look really nice they're gonna look lovely with a coat of paint on them so um let's have a look at this kit in detail okay so uh as usual we'll start to have a look at the instructions and then when we look at the sprues anything that's a bit strange or unusual we'll know what we're talking about what i found when i do reviews look at the sprues first it's kind of you see these molded parts and think mm, what's that look for the instructions first and then you know what you're talking about so um typical sort of trumpeter uh, booklet and it's in 16 pages over 15 stages so nothing too much so I'd imagine this kit would be okay for um, for all skill levels uh, I wouldn't suggest it as probably a first kit but um, be, be be great as a sort of third or fourth one no doubt so normal sort of trumpeter black and white booklet with your, your legends down in here telling you how to apply your decals black and white image there and you've got your, your Chinese and everything there so Opening up the book, we've got a, just checking it on the screen, we've got our sprue callouts here with all our sprues and they are all numbered on here so if you uh, if you lose where you are you know where you can look your parts up. And we've got some photo etch here, decals, some rubber tyres or vinyl tyres should I say and our cab and everything there. So assembly stage one is taking us straight into rear cross member construction and we can see straight away we've got a high level of detail we've got our air couplings there um, for for towing you know other equipment and then we've got our rear lights towing hook there and we've got the uh, rear cross member support looks like we're onto the transfer box and then we're into our chassis cross members more of that later and more chassis cross members and looks like we've got a steering box here going onto the um, mounting bracket with the drop arm there and then we're assembling our main chassis together which I love I love it when you get these kits with separate chassis rails so you actually get to build it up clamp it all to a steel rule if I build this kit I'll show you how we go around doing that um, but getting your chassis square not twisted and level is your, your secret if you don't get if you don't get the chassis right you're going to end up with it sat on four wheels or or five wheels or whatever you don't want that then we're over the page, we're straight into um, manufacturing our leaf springs and adding the separate um, spring bracket there, which is a nice touch. We've got some small detail parts going on here. We've got our uh, swivels and everything. So it's making two of those and two of those. So it's obviously two front, two rear, I'm guessing, or it might be two left, two right. Then we're going to build up our axles. And we've got um, single piece prop shafts, so no separate UJs or anything. Like we get in that beautiful um, Zvezda Russian truck. Uh, and then we've got the other axle going together there and then we've got our front um, front hubs going on so this is obviously the front assembly we've got the steering arms 
not sure if you'd be able to make this steer or not. We'll have a look when we see the parts in the plastic. Um, but you could probably position the wheels. Always nice to have a bit of position on them rather than just have them, you know, dead straight. You don't often see these trucks with everything parked up dead straight. So um, there we go. So our axles there. This is the rear axles going together. Rear brake units. We've got our air brake um, cylinders there. That's all going on. So adding the um, the wheels then with the outer hubs. And then you've got these interior parts here, H9, which should allow the wheels to spin. Um, and the same on the front there. <clears throat> so we add the uh, wheels to our chassis and add the prop shafts front and rear. If you're in America, it's drive shafts to the uh, to the transfer box. Looks a bit faded, that one, doesn't it? A bit, a bit dim. Um, adding on the shock absorbers, which is uh, going to be a nice touch. And then we've got some steering arms going on there. No, that's not steering. Yes, it is. That is the front. That's that's a steering arm. Track rods on the front. So we've got the straight one behind and the uh, shaped one there. Air tanks going together. Nice they've done them like this rather than two halves. So you've got the two ends going on and it looks like the seam is going to be up against the uh, the actual mounting straps, which is which is nice. So then we've got the um, this is either going to be a spare wheel mount or a cab mount or something. Uh, the engine is actually sat on top of this, so it could be part of that. Then we've got our air filter there. It's got the air intake on the side of it there, going into a massive air filter box. Remember, these have got to deal with a lot of dust and sand and everything. And we've got some um, great big fenders there with a, I'm guessing that's a hydraulic box. We've got a few, a jerry cam by the look of it, all going on top of there. So we're adding all that assembly in together. Then we're going to build up our engine. Um, engine looks very, very simple. More on that later. And uh, yeah, the engine on this is, is is quite visible from sort of from the side and from the back. So um, worth doing some extra work on that. And then we've got our uh, battery box here with the air tanks. Again, they've done this end-on assembly, which is a really nice touch. So you don't have any seams to deal with. Uh, there'll probably be a mold seam on here unless they're slide molded. We'll see. Um, and then we've got what looks like it's going to be our spare wheel mount there with the spare wheel lift going on. And then we've got the uh, right hand front fender there being assembled, going together and adding on the uh, the left front fender. And then for some reason it's telling us to put the tyres on here. Um, if you are building this kit, I would seriously suggest leaving the wheels off until the, until the end. Um, but it definitely looks as though you can fit the tires onto the wheels so you can assemble your wheels paint them and then put the tires on after or you might decide to go for some resin so then we've got our floor panel here we've got a beautiful in detailed interior by the look of things so we've got a side console there uh, this is the floor yes yeah. so the driver's compartment is going to be here and he's got a clear window to look through to see that see what he's running over <laughs> um, then you've got a panel here with some instruments on it you've got a beautifully detailed steering column by the look of things and then we've got what looked like lovely seat frames with a, the proper um, sort of lifting and lowering mechanism and they're going to be quite sprung as well. Building up the dashboard, you've got P pan parts on the dashboard there which is a nice touch. And then we've got um, a decal for the instrument panel by the looks of things. Again another seat box mounting and we're adding the instrument panel in there onto the inside. So it's all looking very very nice. No seat box by the look of things so that's something you could add. Um, no doubt Ed will do a set for this. Um, we can have a look at that in scale mix and see what it's about. Adding our glazing into the cab. It's a shame they've done it this way. It would have been nice if it went in the other way. You could have painted everything and then put the glazing in last. But then you could always just paint the outside of the cab now around the windows. Do your rubber framing and then put the windows in and mask them. Um, main glass goes in from the outside so that's okay. You can add that afterwards. And then we've got our doors here with a million decals on the inside by the look of it. One decal going onto that one. So that's going to be a little stencil data, which is a really nice touch. It would be a shame to, to actually model this with the door closed. In that case, it would look good with the door open. But again, as I say, you have to get yourself some seat belts of some fashion. Um, over the page then, we've got the, uh, this is a, a photo etched grill going on the front. It looks like we have got the Oshkosh badge. It might say Oshkosh with one of the S's as an eight or something for copyright, but uh, we'll see. And then we've got mirrors, um, very, very scale looking mirrors and separate wipers, which is a nice touch. Steps there going in. And then we've got a P frame going around the uh, heat shield on the exhaust, which is a nice touch. And then adding all that together, dropping the cab on. 
and we've got our fuel tank here that's obviously two halves you'll have a scene to deal with on there um, advice to newer, model newer modelers look through your instructions when you see stuff like this before you start the kit or when you start the kit do that first glue that together get a rubber band around it or something put it in the box and then when you come to need it you've got a dry hardened shrunk seam so you won't be dealing with this when you need it um, always good, good advice with, with stuff like that because we all know you glue that together with liquid cement and then you sort of can't wait to get back into it and you want to get on it and get it done so you, you, you go on it you put some mister service on the seam and you sand it down and you paint it and then you look at it a week later and the seam sunk so um, yeah get that done first of all and then you won't have any problems um, or use super glue um, and then we've got some tow hooks going on the front so it looks like it's got some very nice levels of detail we've got a so that's going to be a um, wheel chock rack or a jerry cam rack or something there that's made a photo etch that's going to look really nice sat there between the wheels and then we've got our radiator here and the engine cover and we've got the access panel here with some sort of ladder or something by the look of it and that's going to sit on the back here so we've got another photo etch tread plate there engine cover going on there uh, this looks like some sort of winch going in the side here which is an unusual place to have it and then we've got um, that's nice the ramps for the fifth wheel are actually photo etched so they're going to look very nice and in scale and then some other detail parts going in here so this is obviously the winch and then the, the winch cable is going to come down the side between the wheels normally the winch would be in the in the center and then we've got finally a spare wheel rack and building up our spare wheel we're adding in some cylinders of some sort there and then we're putting spare wheel onto that fender there another piece of bent photo etch which is a nice touch adding the fifth wheel with the release handle and everything underneath turn that over that's going to sit on the back there and then we've got our, our post here and I'm assuming I'm assuming this is going to be where the um, the cable should be now when you look at the model on the box you can see you've got your airlines here now you'll have to do a bit of research I was correct that is a winch just check what, just looking at a glossy reflection so we've got a red and a red and um, blue airlines there so add them that will make a really nice um, standout feature of the model and uh, that is certainly something worth doing but do a bit of research or I'll do a bit of research and tell you we'll see where the airlines attach it'll be down here somewhere I should imagine so there we go it looks like we've got another spare wheel clamp there so whether that would be a spare wheel for the trailer that goes there I don't know again research is king so you've got a spare wheel for the truck um, that little center area looks to, that would probably be a spare wheel for the trailer going there um, no doubt if you buy the Patriot kit it will tell you what's going on so there we are that's the instructions let's have a look at some plastic okay so I've got the box here to my left and I'm just going to take the sprues out as they are in there and the first one here it looks like we've got sprue B so I'll just get this bag open as you can see I've got a brand new blade not like normal where I'm wrestling with it put the bags over there because it will go back in so what have we got on here as I say this is sprue B got it upside down typical um, lovely trumpeter plastic it's very very nice to work with it's not soft it's not hard it's uh, it's lovely to work with and um, normally very clean now as I say I bought this kit as soon as it came out so this will be one of the initial um, initial mouldings if you like so we should see some pretty sharp crisp moulding we shouldn't see a lot of flash um, which is why I, I bear that it's the same with that Mark 23 truck I showed you I bought that the second it came out so um, if, I, if, if, if a kit is released that I know I'm going to build one day or I love that subject I buy it straight away so um, that's what I do and I would advise you to do the same because moulds do get tired and, and you know but when a kit's first released they're often uh, they're often very sharp anyway I'm waffling so what have we got on here we've got the air intakes here which is um, everything is very sharp and crisp axles more axle parts here We've got our fenders here with some nice bulk detail and that on them. Now, while I go through this kit, I will talk about detail. As far as accuracy goes, I'm not sure until we get to one stage of things and then we'll cover that. So, um, got a sump there by the look of it. And then we've got prop shafts, 
some sort of cross member it looks like it's the fifth wheel mounting actually fifth wheel itself give that a nice thick cone of grease um, then this is going to be part of the winch by the look of it engine cover side panels uh, this is the radiator with a very simple mesh on there so that that could do with the uh, replacing with something um, looks like we've got some sort of turbo or compressor system there at least and then we've got some cylinders here suspension parts little linkages um, that's that frame that sits on the back with the tread plate going in it um, and obviously the engine fan there so yeah lovely bit of molding on that corrugated pipe there turning it over um, very very shallow in fact some look raised and some look shallow but ejector pin marks in there under the wheel arches that you might want to get rid of ejector pin marks are on the inside of the engine covers that you probably want to get rid of because you will see them when you look in um, but yeah on the whole really really nice just show you up quickly the uh, the moulding on these axles really really crisp really nice beautifully done so there we are so that's uh, that's sprue B put that one over there and then here we've got this one is sprue A so we'll get this bag cut open caught on that hole there never throw your bags away always keep the bags and put them back in um, when the sprues are on top of each other rattling around in the box they can get damaged so what have we got here lots to talk about uh, that looks like part of a um, gearbox casing or something and then we've got some mountings here for the cab or the engine whatever it was and then this is where we're talking about those air tanks where we've got the end pieces here um, and there by the look of it and uh, what we've got there is the actual uh, the seam where it joins onto the center part is actually part of the the mounting strap you can see there so you've got no sort of seam to deal with as it were uh, gearbox cross member here instrument panel main fuel tank remember cut those off and glue them together first of all and we've got a lovely panel there looks like some sort of engine cover or something or something for the interior here's the um this is actually the lower part that sits in front of the wheels and let's just have a look here have we got oshkosh on there or is it osh i think that actually does say oshkosh i'm gonna look on the phone because it'll magnify it yeah it looks like it does actually say oshkosh so they've obviously either just ignored any copyright or they've got permission um yeah lovely lovely steering wheel detail there with the Oshkosh logo in the middle engine block there as I say very simple could do with them um, replacing or some detail added transfer box detail there which is very nice doors there and lovely interior door detail and as you can see with all these ejector tabs on the outside no ejector pin marks on the inside thank you trumpeter lovely job uh, looks like the radiator header tank there that's the engine top cover and I'm assuming this is going to be part of our spare wheel there and as will that be um, but yeah on the whole really really nice just give you a close-up of some of this detail you've seen the Oshkosh logo those mirrors look lovely again no um, no ejector pin oh yes there is there are ejector pin marks in those mirrors you could just make them out there but they are very shallow but we've got some lovely detail going on here on everything really this is the back side of the sprue and there's the front side so as I say those doors lovely detail lovely detail on the inside um, to really make these handles pop take a brand new number 11 blade or a number 10 and scrape in there with the blade like so yeah and you can basically almost hollow that out and then when you put a wash in it actually looks like a handle rather than a two-dimensional molded part so there we go that's um that's sprue a and now the sprues are going to get start getting smaller so we'll get this one out this is sprue c so not quite in order but almost there right um lots and lots of parts here so we've got all our shock absorbers going across there we've got some grab handles here um, there is minimal seam lines on them um, we've got a 
can there with it's probably a water can I'm guessing because it's got some it's a plastic one with them um, molded on writing by the look of it um, exhaust manifolds we've got some sort of pulley system there and then various bits and pieces of our steering there's some little greeblies there's the drop arm for the steering there um, looks like some mounts there little bit of flash showing on this sprue just a tiny little bit here and there um, but literally you know nothing but nevertheless it's there but there's some uh, lovely molding you can see we've got some seam lines to do with on the shock absorbers there but you know hey we're modelers so let's have a close-up of this sprue uh, as you can see there's lots and lots of little tiny parts and lots and lots of little mold seams to deal with deal with so as you can see all very very nice beautiful mold in there on that uh, on that water can lovely detail on the side of the ladder there with a mold seam down the middle of it to get rid of but you know every manufacturer would have done that so there you go very nice indeed now I think we're going to start getting into the mirrored sprues now so as you can see this kit is brand new I've never even opened any of the bag one of the, one of the bags is open though for some reason I don't know why so right this is actually a mirrored sprue and this is sprue J so we'll put one to one side and just concentrate on the one um, what have we got on here some lovely seat mountings there Got some steering some hubs or some uprights we've got our leaf springs there which look to be beautifully molded obviously they've got a seam line up them but they don't have the normal sink mark that a lot of manufacturers get so that's that's a really nice touch trumpeter well done for that um we've got some towing eyes there i don't know what that is but it's a lovely detailed part uh steering box by the look of it and then we've got some little um hinge mountings there brake drums We've got a mud flap there. Now on the inside, we've got um, strap and bolt detail. And on the reverse side, we've got the Oshkosh logo uh, and everything on there. So that's a really nice touch. So none of this, like the, um, the Hobby Boss had Oshkosh and they made one of the S's into an eight. Or like some of the Hobby Boss stuff where you don't get any logo at all, like on their, um, on their Kamaz. So yeah. Rocker cover there by the look of it, another prop shaft, seat back with a bit of um, a bit of texture moulded into it, it's a nice touch. So yeah, I'll give you a close up on this one. Really, really nice. Very impressed with this kit actually so far. But obviously there is going to be something at the end I'm going to tell you all about. I still haven't seen the middle of these tanks that you can see, another one of those air tanks and you can see the mould seam or the seam where you're going to glue it is actually going to be the edge of the strap so no problems putting that together okay so getting into these multiple sprues so these are the basically the wheel sprues and everything so we've got four of these so let's have a look in here put those two aside this is sprue h and um, we've basically got um on here we've got our obviously our rear and our front wheels so these have already got the actual hub on them and there we have to add that flange onto there and then we've got a interesting textured finish on the back of there which is unusual um, we've got what looks like to be part of the front brake drums there the rear of the wheel rims here so that's the rear of the wheel room there I'm not sure what they're going to be for but um basically yeah we've got some little air connectors here uh lights obviously towing eyes we've got some um obviously hub centers there looks like a hold down strap air brakes end caps for something or other another air brake part there and a bracket so just show you up, up close this detail on here the uh the wheel detail is 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 very nice indeed Where's the other one? There it is. Some very nice nut and bolt detail in there. No valves, so you could add that if you wanted to with a piece of plastic rod or something. 
and then we've got all the lovely detail on the little brake parts there's the rear light there so yeah Ooh, very nice indeed I'm just waiting to have a Patriot system to uh, to attach to it and then another couple of sprues here's our chassis rails I'll just get one of these out I won't get them both out great big pile of sprues building up on the right hand side here so here we've got the um, this is obviously the right chassis rail so we can see we've got lovely bulk detail all our brackets and bits and pieces all crisply molded on there um, bolts of washers and then on the inside there we've got the reverse side we've got the nuts and the washers but we have got some ejector pin marks in there to get rid of but they are extremely shallow and I will show you just how shallow they are if I just go like that in fact that one was slightly raised that's gone so nothing to worry about there guys um, really really nicely done thank you trumpeter so uh, yeah that was pretty much gone so there we go give you a close-up on that show the bulk detail very very crisp very very sharp really really nice and then on the back side of the nut detail you can see those tiny shallow ejector pin marks slightly raised or slightly shallow but um nothing to get rid of so we then got our clear parts now i'm not going to get these out because all that is going to be is a load of flat panels and it's trumpeter so we know it's going to be really really good um then we've got here, we've got our cab floor. Let's have a look at this one. For some reason, my knife has suddenly stopped cutting. It's strange. Um, back over there. So then this floor is very nice indeed. Very, you'd have to model this with the doors though, I'm afraid. It's so nice inside. We have got some ejector pin marks on the bottom. In fact, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27 ejector pin marks there. Wow. That's injection pin, <laughs> ejector pin mark city. But, you know, it's the cab. It's going to be down that way. You're not going to see it. But they are all slightly raised by the look of it. Other than these here, they all look slightly raised. So not much work at all to get rid of them um, but you've got the seat mounting brackets in the bottom there you can see we've got some lovely panel detail on there with all the the rivets and studs um, really really nice and then we've got a um, a recessed area there with all the studs and everything around let's give you a close-up just so you can see how nice that is it's lovely really really nice beautifully detailed part and then we've got the actual cab top itself so let's have a look in here. If I can get it out, careful not to break it. So 135th M9983. So no date or anything, but it's um, just giving you a serial number there. So we've got some huge sprue cutoff points here from the factory, and luckily the person on working that shift that day has stayed away from the part so we've got some cleanup to do on these um, massive sprue connection points if you're buying this from a shop probably worth having a look inside the box and checking because you, you'll probably find that at least on a couple of examples you can see they got very close there but sometimes what they do they've obviously the, their cutters are probably bigger than these and they come along and they cut them off and they go like that and the end of the sprue or well, the end of the cutters cuts the plastic here again here they could have done it and twisted it whatever so if you're buying this from a shop have a look in the box before you buy it just to make sure it's all okay and if there's more than one on the shelf then obviously choose the best one but um yeah this this is lovely um there's some ejector pin marks inside here but we've got the uh, the steel structure of the roof and everything and it's really really nice um you got all the lovely bulk detail down the sides there all around the windows uh, very very sharp on the rubbers around the windows so they'll be nice and easy to mask and paint um, we've got the side reflectors there and there 
the marker light and the lovely rivet detail around there and again on the back lovely rivet detail or bolt detail with the um, with the window rubbers there so you can see it's all very very crisply done and all very beautifully molded and the hinges are accurately done there so you can put your doors in have them open it'll just look wonderful I don't remember seeing check straps in either so we'll have a look for them um, and then we've got tires so we've actually got nine tires so let's have a look at these I know some people hate vinyl tires personally I don't really mind them um, so we've got we've actually got Michelin on here it's not Michelin or Michelin or, or, or with an eight on it or whatever it's actually Michelin so obviously Trumpets have either got copyright or they're just thinking sod it we're gonna go ahead and do it anyway we've got size there uh, some logo there and an X mark there um, same on both sides we've also got the molding in there the uh, the radial lines which is nice we have got a seam but um, that will soon sand out but again as I say they are nice and soft um, these tires don't tend to show flat spots much anyway so yeah really nice I'm very happy with them I would probably use them um, so I'll just show you the detail on the side walls you can see there you've got Michelin and then you've got the uh, some wording over here and you've got the size there and there you go and then um, XL tubeless so yeah really really nice and there's a seam as you can see on there that needs dealing with apologize for my disgusting nails guys this is as a result of working on the Land Rover so there we are very very nice indeed as I say get nine of those and then a sheet of photo etch again I won't bother getting this out but we can see on here that there's some lovely lovely etch detail there I mean this this is gorgeous you could put some dents in that and wear it out and stuff it really really good when it's on there and um, the heat shield there and the exhaust it's all very nicely um, to scale and then there's those rear ramps for the fifth wheel which would be folded up beautiful really really nice kit uh, as I said I bought this when it first came out and I haven't even really looked at it since so um, again I won't get the decals out but we can see on here that we've got um, some different uh, number plates reg plates whatever you want to call them we've got our instrument panel here and then we've got a mountain of placards for going all around the model there and then it's saying DC fuel <laughs> it's not DC fuel it's diesel fuel um, so you'd have to do a bit of surgery on there and either put some paint over the uh, two little strikes on the e, make it into an L um, and then we've got some uh, names there of uh, users the storage box label US Army and then I say you've got a load of placards there which are uh, very very nice trumpet decals absolutely fine in my experience um, but they do sometimes have these funny little sparing spelling areas uh, it's like on here we've got caution do not over ill allow for expansion so you want to cut the F off of there and add it to the ill <laughs> or just cut the gap out and uh, is overfill one word or overfill two words I can't remember now but uh, yeah so you have to do a bit of work there on that one but at least it's all there I mean like with that DZ you can just easily cut those two strikes off where is it here you've got the DZ Cut the two strikes off and turn the E into an L. Okay. Does that say drain? I'm sure that says drain air tank sail. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so that's uh, that's that. So that has been the trumpeter. Hemp 983 tractor uh, kit number 01021 and um, yeah there's a couple of issues with this kit that I'm going to talk about in another review um, that are fairly serious and 
you may wish to just build this out of the box and I'm sure you'll be more than happy with it but I'm going to do a review straight after this one on some aftermarket for this model and it will soon become very apparent what's wrong and what's actually missing thanks for watching again thank you for all your uh, subscriptions thank you for your contributions to the channel on patreon and on paypal and um, i look forward to uh, hearing from you about this kit let me know what you think let me know if you're going to get it and if you are going to get it and build it perhaps send me some pictures over at uh, nigel's modeling bench at gmail.com so um, thanks for watching see you all soon bye for now